Mike Pacelli here. Thanks for hanging out with me. I do appreciate it. For this lesson, I'm going to be talking about This Boy, as recorded by the Beatles uh, on October 13th, 1963, at EMI in London, in Studio 2, matter of fact. Now, This Boy shows that the band wasn't a one-trick pony. Um, they were able to do some serious hard rockers and then some tear-jerkers like this song. Uh, it's the first one they did in 6-8, although you can write it in 12-8. It's a little more hard for me to read when there's 12 beats per measure, but it has a 6-8 feel. I'll show you in a minute. And um, it uses a common 1950s uh, kind of doo-wop chord progression, which is known as 1-6-2-5. Uh, and the inspiration was from uh, Smokey Robinson's um, I've Been Good to You. Although this boy is in D, and that, that song, Smokey's, is in A-flat, I think. But it's, it, Smokey's is still the you know, one six two five although Smokey's does a cool thing Smokey's goes one then it goes up been good to you the Beatles didn't use that part but they used the one six two five uh, it has close harmonies a la uh, songs like uh, uh, to know her is to love her which was part of the Beatles repertoire and um, it, it kind of shows their natural ability to sing three-part harmony. Uh, Paul had uh, said that his dad initially taught them to sing three-part harmony like that. Uh, but George, George says, uh, you know, it was just natural. They all, coming up in the 50s and listening to doo-wop and rock and roll, everybody knew how to do that. So it was a natural progression. Plus, like I said, they did plenty of those kind of uh, songs in their live gig. Um, it was written by John and Paul when they were on the road. Uh, they wrote it in a hotel in 1963. Um, it was one of the first songs they recorded on four track. Um, they sang the three part harmony live together on one microphone. And uh, it's pretty in tune. A few notes of, the, of their harmony is not perfect, but uh, you know, for 1963, three young cats, uh, close harmony like that, they did a good job. And, and that day they had recorded, I Wanna Hold Your Hand. So I mean, they're recording you know, rock tunes like that and then this, this tearjerker. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, they did 15 takes. Uh, they splice take 14 and 15 together. You can hear the splice is pretty evident after the middle eight. And uh, they had tried a, a, a George Harrison guitar solo on that bridge section, but that didn't work out. Um, so they ended up doing the bridge. I don't know why they didn't do the bridge twice, because it's so fabulous and powerful. And, and usually in most Beatles songs, that kind of bridge they did twice, but they didn't do it there. But George Harrison's part really swings, and I'll talk about that later too. Um, what else? Uh, they, they had recorded an ending, a full ending, like they do live, you know, where they hit the last chord, this boy. But uh, for some reason, George Martin didn't use that, and he did this fade out real quick, which is uh, kind of anticlimactic, in my humble opinion. Um, let's see, it was released uh, November of 63 on Parlophone as the B-side of I Want to Hold Your Hand. But the first time we heard it in America would be, I think it would, would it be on Meet the Beatles, which is January 20th, 1964. So um, that's pretty much the backstory of, uh, of this boy. So let's, let's get started. If you've watched any of my other instructional videos, you've probably figured out I'm a big fan of John Lennon's rhythm guitar playing. That's because he makes some intelligent choices on chord voicings and chord fingerings. Simple stuff like, uh, like playing a, a first position E when George is playing you know, uh, E7 or E9. Uh, it, actually, that happens in, in this boy. And, and a lot of other examples like that. Uh, he, he gets the most out of, out of a rock quartet because he doesn't play the exact same chord voicings or the exact same rhythm that the lead guitar player plays at the same time, so it gives it a fuller sound. Um, so the song is in 6-8. Um, John begins it, not quite in time, just a kind of little three chord pickup thing. And the first chord is um, a typical John Lennon uh, uh, voicing of a D banjo chord, you know, four string. But he puts the A in the bass, and he, and he makes it a five chord, five uh, string chord, like this. All right? And then the second chord is like a, a suspended, just strummed up to the to the B string, and then back to the uh, original D uh, over A. Right, so it's right. 
Now you would expect John to keep his four note banjo chord, but he doesn't. He plays a straight B, a D chord like this throughout the whole song. Never goes back to the banjo chord. And he's, he plays on beat one and beat four, if you think of it in six eight. Um, if you think of it in 12 eight, I guess he's one and four and seven and whatever it is. But it's hard for me to think 12 eight. Uh, I, I can think uh, six eight. I'm guessing dollars to donuts though that John was feeling it in four, because that's kind of our little rock trick, that when, when the song is in 6-8, you know, they kinda, you, you, you make a four feel, because he's playing, it can be thought of like he's playing, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Either way, uh, charts and tabs I'll, I'll have available, you can, you can look at it and, 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 and feel it the way you want to feel it. Okay, so he plays a straight D chord, and then his B minors, the very first time, it sounds like he played the very, f f a, a, a normal B minor, like, you know, but the rest of the song, he plays a B minor more like this, where um, you hear this top four strings, and it sounds like the sixth and the fifth string are muted by his thumb, because it feels like he's going all the way through it, like that, you know, like, so like, you know, you get the whole sound. Very first time he plays E minor seventh, he kind of strums through it like uh, a little slower, slightly slower. It's a little more, you know, digs into the E minor seventh, to an A. And I'm feeling that sometimes he voices his, or fingers his A like this. Sometimes he fingers it like this. Although in many Beatles songs, when he fingers it like this, you hear the F sharp, you hear. But not in this boy. Anyhow, I digress. So uh, if you think one and four, it's... break, very short E minor, very short A. And the way you do that is you, you play the chord and you mute it with this part of your hand. So uh, strum a chord, E minor 7th for instance, and quickly kind of lift up and mute. And same thing with the A. I don't know why they didn't make it longer, because they could have held the chord. If this boy, right? But they didn't, they go. To me, it always sounds a little unnatural when you hear him play it live, too. But nevertheless, that's what they did. Who am I to say? Second verse is the same, you know. Okay, now, going into the bridge... The first D is like this. He, he, he keeps on the just the kind of single strums. Two, three, four. To a D7 played here. Two, three. And now John switches to the 6 8 feel. I'm, I feel that. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so it's G, and and to my ear, it sounds like he's not he's not uh, muting anymore. You hear that? So I I think he's playing it like this, unless he's really good at you know getting that, which I, I'm not too good at. But anyhow, it sounds like John plays a straight F sharp to a B minor, back to this D seven. Straight G chord. John plays a straight E chord to an A. And then that blood curdling scream. So again, uh, so again the bridge uh, from the E minor. The six eight. the bridge. Back to the verse, normal. And they 
fade out like that. And those are all the parts you need to play this boy just like John Lennon. George Harrison did his usual stellar job uh, on this boy. And uh, there's a few little you know, recording tricks of the trade I, I like to share with you that they used. Um, John played his Gibson J160E, his uh, acoustic, and I showed you how he did a little palm muting on the stops. And there was a lot of muting going on uh, on George's guitar too. George played a Gretsch Country Gentleman. Now, this is a, a, a Gretsch Country classic. It's a reissue. Um, I tell you, if you want to buy a replica Beatles guitar, this is the one to get because it's made in Japan. This one was made in 2005, and I've owned a lot of vintage guitars, still do. Uh, they just don't seem to, you know, hold up over the years like some of the replicas. And I have a number of the Beatle type replicas, and none of them compared to this one. And nevertheless, the difference between this um, country classic and a country gentleman is there's, there's, uh, the country gentleman has these mutes. These two mutes where you can mute the uh, the high strings or the low strings, and they're little screw things, and you could you know it's these little kind of foamy things that you could bring up close to the uh, strings. Well, he obviously was muting his lower strings on this boy because there's there's virtually no extra ring of the low strings. There's a little extra ring of the high. So I'm guessing that he just kind of used the lower mute on his uh, country gentleman. So I've got this piece of foam stuck in there to to get the same muting so I can strum through and uh, have, the, have a similar sound. Okay, so, um, you know, the song is in 6-8, and George basically uh, plays the same pattern. His pattern would be uh, an eighth note, four sixteenth notes, and then three uh, eighth notes. So it'd be like, um, uh, first chord D, it'd be like one, da-da-da-da, and then da-da-da. So like, eighth note, sixteenth, four sixteenth notes, three eighth notes. I'll do it slow, so. To the B minor, E minor seventh, A. That's pretty much what he uh, attempts to play in the entire song during the verses. So, and you can hear the mute makes it, uh, you know, uh, have a nice kind of percussive sound. Now, uh, so he goes through the song. And he yeah, just, just like John, but, but voice like this, his D like this, his B minor, his E minor 7th, and his A, so. palm mute because this is doing the job on the low strings on the on the stops you can just palm just mute with your left hand now if you want to do it exactly like George on the second verse he kind of variates the uh, that pattern instead of going he kind of goes something like that so let me see if I can do the second verse he goes like no, it's like catches up on the B minor, but neither here nor there. I'll try to do it exactly the way he did it when I do the performance section at the end. Okay, now going into the bridge, uh, he's on a D chord, so to the A, to, now he, he goes, okay, so from the E minor, I'll play it speed. This boy. Like that, so again, slow. And then to a D9. And um, now to G, regular G. And, and oh, he goes to the 6 8 fill like, like uh, John does. To an F sharp 7th. He plays the 7th against John's straight uh, F sharp. B minor. And he goes to a straight D. Now I'm almost wondering, John is on this D7, 
George first plays a straight D because John is playing a D7 like this. So again, on the B minor. First position D for George. Then to a D9. And on the D9 figure, he plays a, a, a rhythm like this. Right? Then back to G. To an E7 like this. E9, same figure. To an A bar here. Right? So let me do that. Uh, I'll do the whole bridge from the stop. And then the last verse, back to the regular figure. And for the fade, same, same figure out. Now there's one more uh, overdub that George plays uh, on the song, but uh, let me uh, fix up my guitar and I'll show you that. George Harrison became a really great slide guitar player later on in his career, but you can tell he was messing around with it back in 1963 because he uses a slide on this boy. Uh, when they're fading out on the D to B minor to you know, this boy, he plays his figure like this. Right? How's he doing that? Well, first he's playing octaves and he's using his second and his middle finger to pick the fourth and first string. So you got the 10th fret of the first string and the 12th fret of the um, fourth string. And then you play those notes as a D, C sharp, B, C sharp. And then from the, on the G string, from fret 11 to 14, you're playing an F sharp to an A. And he's, probably, and he's muting, no doubt, the uh, fourth and the, and the second string with his thumb and his middle finger and picking that with his first finger. So it's nice and clean like that. So you go. Right? And I believe that when they were recording that, they were, they were bringing up the volume a little bit on the slide and there's a little touch of reverb because... Either that or the Fairchild was working so invisibly that that was bringing the sound up. But uh, I can tell by listening, I'm going to have to mix it correctly to get it to sound sort of like the record. But that's how he did that. Playing octaves. Octaves with his thumb and his middle finger. Oops. Then on the G string, fret uh, 11 to 14, muting the fourth and the second string with these two fingers and picking the G string with your first finger. <laughs> so such a such a clever idea, right? <laughs> I love that. So that's what George did on the overdub. Okay, for fun, once again, I'm going to put it all together and uh, do my best to sound, you know, in the uh, hemisphere of the Beatles. This 
boy wants you back again. That's how you play This Boy by the Beatles. Hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com. And please, if you would, subscribe to this channel. And when you play these old Beatles songs, have fun doing it. Because that's what playing the guitar should be all about. I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me.